Hello everyone, and today we're going to be talking about the new X-Ray content on Amazon Prime, The Wheel of Time animated shorts, going over some of the lore that's been dabbled on into throughout season one. And I really wasn't entirely sure what I was getting into here. I knew there were going to be little vignettes that just kind of told different stories we've had hinted at throughout the show in more detail, but beyond that, I had no clue. What I will get into first is my heaviest criticism towards Amazon Prime in this endeavor. Your X-ray content is super inaccessible and that makes it kind of overall a bad experience. Not only did the full screen button not work now that I was forced to use your little X-ray thing on Amazon Prime where I had to pause it and figure it, it sucked, but I am seeing many people online talk about the fact that they cannot find it. Here's my big piece of advice if you want to be successful in new ambitious media. Make your content as easy to get as possible. Put this on YouTube. Put it on all kinds of different places. This is great free marketing for your show and putting it behind this wall of difficulty to get to is super antithetical to the purpose of having content like this. I get I get that you are wanting to have a thing where it's like, oh, yeah, you go to the show and you hit pause and there's this exclusive special feature. How cool. I get that. It's understandable. You're trying to attract people to using Prime. This is not the way to do it. This kind of content is a great marketing tool for the show and it should be out and available as possible. Put merchandise and stuff in the x-ray. The great cast info, love that. I seriously think it's a real step up over a lot of other streaming services. I love seeing who's in a scene. God damn it. Okay, I put a timer down to stop myself from ranting for too long. That timer went off, so I'm done. Moving on to the actual content. Cool. Okay, but getting into the reviews itself. Here we have four short stories that go over four very important pieces of lore for the Wheel of Time. First, we have Sayadin Sayadar. Then we have the story of the greatest warrior, the fall of Manetherin, and the breaking of the world. Inverse that, because it's presented in a line where that's the order they're in, but in reality, episode one's at the end there, and that's how you need to go through. I'm not. A, I'm gonna stop complaining about the layout and formatting of Prime, it's fine. And I do recommend you watch these in order, not only because it chronologically is kind of giving you a nice presentation with Ashley Side Inside R being in like a classroom as well as the breaking of the world. There's like a really cool framing device in a couple of these and it's just so stupidly immersive. And that's very prevalent in the first one, The Breaking of the World, and it's because of the art style chosen. Here we see an Aes Sedai presenting to a class, and then they dive into just telling straightforward The Breaking of the World. And this telling I recommend to fans and non-fans alike. It doesn't matter if you know this lore, it's just like a good presentation of a story. Not only are the voice actors doing well, but the sound design for each of these stories is a banger. I'd be an idiot to also not talk about the visuals. They do such a good job of steeping you deep into this world. It feels like you're looking in on something private through this painted lens at a lower frame rate that does match the world the show is crafting, but also transport you in time to feeling ancient, to feeling old, like you're being taught a history lesson. And the fact that there's a framing device on more than one of these to be that is just all the more exquisite. The breaking of the world feels as epic as it should, and then they kind of did an interesting telling of Manetherin that actually felt a little more personal to me than any of the tellings I've gotten before. While there's always an emotional through line to the fall of Manetherin, here we see the king on the front lines and it transports us to his Aes Sedai wife feeling the fall and the viciousness of the Trollocs is even greater than the live action because of some liberties they're allowed to take with animation and changing frame rates. Really just wow. The people that did this, I don't know if they're big fans or if they were just told the stories and they're high talented artists, they were told to roll with it. Ah, the breaking definitely made me go, wow, this is this is an interesting little endeavor. And then the fall of Manetherin was on a level where I kind of was like, okay, I'd be okay with all the Wheel of Time being told this way. It's such an addictive 
format. And then we have episode three, The Greatest Warder, which definitely has a bit of a turn to it because instead of being this kind of grander story, it seems like something more minor, but that's kind of a welcome change of pace. It now all of a sudden feels like I'm not seeing one of the most important things in history, but just a important thematic through line to the philosophy of the Wheel of Time. And here we see a warder instructing a trainee warder on the greatest swordsman of all time. And I won't spoil the story there and what exactly the lesson to be taken away is, but it was a very interesting usage of the vagueness here because we're being told a more direct story. There's this fog around it. And to me, that kind of left an impression on an artistic level of this is a story that's been told time and time again, that we've lost a lot of the details and instead we're just looking at the root core of what's important. So it's like this visual uh, implication for what actually happens through stories with the passage of time. At least that's how we looked into it. And it's just it's visually gorgeous. It's like eye orgasms left and right. Daniel Green, the reviewer who will articulately say some things about his feelings and then talk about eye ejaculating. Yay. And then we end on probably my least favorite one, but it's still fantastic. Like these are all very, like these are all so enjoyable as a fan or non-fan. If you're just looking for clarification, I think these do an outstanding job of further expounding on some ideas that the show only had time to touch on. No, these are not like an excuse to like just remove things from the show. These are all things that have been explained in the show, or I assume will be because they very easily could. Here is just like, instead of getting the foot notes that you can weave into dialogue. You're getting the entire story that is focusing on conveying a narrative and tone for each of these events. And the Saeedine Sardar one felt the most unnecessary, at least for me as an established book fan, because this was the one where it's like, I've heard this so many times because it's explained in every Wheel of Time book, yet I still enjoyed the art and the presentation of it. But I'm guessing though, this is the one that'll probably be the most needed for those who are new to the Wheel of Time world because it's such a fundamental part of the world and I don't feel like the show has the time to really get into the ideas and nuances of Saedine Saedar and the one power as a whole and the stone like this vignette is allowing them to. So if you're any confused on that at all, I highly recommend you go hit pause, hit bonus content, and check this out. The fact you have to do that's kind of dumb. Like imagine if they aired this as like a commercial or something that was like put in front of people, it would get them so interested. It's such a fascinating little look into this world. And if you want, okay, I'm done. Overall, I think this is an absolutely fabulous usage of the new age of streaming we're in, where presenting something like this to an audience would be borderline impossible in like the 90s or early 2000s. Like it would be so strange to reserve like this small segment of time to shove in some lore exposition in a fun, interesting way. And it's so brilliant to have this little nugget you can click on and, you know, get into. I love that. I wish it was more accessible. Whatever. Moving, moving. All right. But in terms of the content here, this is a 10 out of 10. I hope they drop more of these for every season. And my only real complaint about the content is that they weren't longer. Every time one ended, I went, oh, <laughs> I wanted so much more. If you want to do New Spring entirely in this fashion, no complaints here. Wow. But let me know what you think of the animated Wheel of Time stories in the comments down below. Did you love them? Did you hate them? Do you want to see an entire New Spring adaptation in such a format? Because I could really see it actually being done. It's so immersive for something that feels like it's not in the main storyline. It's like someone with the one power using it to show you a story and ah, I love it. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.